So um, last week we spoke about um, relational patterns and, and things like that and at the end of the video was part of being at school and how you complied and you know you didn't want to be picked and how that mm. made you feel and how shy you were and that no one had spotted um, you know or asked what is going on for you yeah. so, um, so reflecting on that video and how how you've you viewed yourself in in the videos that we've done um, some of what you said was quite critical about yourself so where were your thinking then on the critical level of the things of, that you don't like about yourself such as you've mentioned your voice and yeah um it took me a, it's taken me a while to actually um get round to watching them mm. um i started off by just watching like 10 seconds and hearing my voice and hating it and seeing um my face on the screen and hating it um so I'd turn it off and not um, watch any more than a few seconds of it. And I did that quite a number of times um, before I made myself sit down and, and, and watch it. And I had to sort of watch it as if and tell myself I wasn't watching me. That was the only way because um, I don't like looking at myself. I never look in a mirror, very rarely. I don't have pictures taken if I do I don't look at them I just think well it's causing less I learned when I was little that if you cause a fuss you don't want your picture taken you don't, it cause a fuss just have it taken and just don't look at it um I haven't seen like my sister's wedding and stuff like that on video just don't look at myself and stuff um so it was really hard for me to watch them hear my voice and without being oh you're ugly oh you're horrible you're making a squeak if I, I wanted to listen to what I was saying so for me to be able to do that, I had to sort of like think it's not me, because if you're thinking it's me, I was criticising my appearance, what was my my tone of voice, how I looked, and that kind of thing. So when I watched them, I watched them as if I was just watching a documentary or anything, and, and taking note of what was what the person was saying. Mm. That's how I was able to watch them. One of the other things you'd said is um, you'd watched it with the subtitles on. Yeah. Because you disliked your your accent. Yeah. And that's another thing is that that's been given to us. Our accents have, have been given to us. Mm. And so we might not have chosen them. We might not like them. Um, but for you, um, that had kind of made you giggle because even even the subtitles couldn't pick up your accent. Yeah, some of the some of the things that I said were not like what I'd said. When okay. it were quite it were quite funny, right? Um, in places, um, because it hadn't picked up my accent or how sometimes I don't finish words or I say slang. It the subtitles weren't picking up on that, so it was quite funny. So um, that gave a a funny side to watching them. But I watched them as if I was, um, um, as if it was part of, like I say, somebody else, a documentary part of a project. I wanted to make a note of the themes of what I was saying, so I wasn't always repeating myself in in each video because I do I do forget what I say and things like that. Um, so I I was able to watch them by looking at as if it was if I was doing a project. You know, making notes. Oh, I'm talking about. Oh, I talk about OCD and that one, so I know I don't need to. I've sort of like ticked that off, or or whatever. Or I've talked about school. Mm. Um, but yeah, I did. I must admit, initially, I did write a criticism, like flinging my arms all over the place, pausing, my voice. Don't like the way I look. Don't the what the what a list of criticisms, and then I had to sort of like say, right, no. Can you wear your ego saying that? Yeah, I just start to sort of like. Yeah. This isn't getting you anywhere. I won't even listen to what was being said because I was too busy criticizing myself. Did you lose? Did you lose a, a point of why you wanted to make these videos? Yeah. Did you lose a sense of that? Yeah. So why do you want to still carry on doing these videos? Um. I feel that. 
I want to say this right, but I feel that it's it's not, I don't feel as if I'm saying it that it's just, oh, look what I've been through and this is about me. I think it's about um, as a representation of what, like, what happened to me when I was little um, can impact on somebody. And um, I, I don't think that that's really a lot of people understand that and I've been criticised for my responses I've been labelled and diagnosed with different conditions and lived my life and tried the best I can but being criticised for it because people haven't understand these are the responses to difficulties and trauma and stuff like that and I just want people to be aware of those things and I know um, one of the uh, there's been a few sort of like specific things that I can remember I remember something in a in the paper a few years ago and it said um, it was about a child abuse case that was going through court and it was only a few lines but it said um, in the summing up the judge said that's two childhoods you'd ruined and I read it and I thought well no it's not do you not realize that the impact is there after childhood um, and little things like that I've started um, making me think people don't really understand or have a clear understanding of what it's like and I think my I've led a sort of like a really quite small closed life and not had much contact with other people but through just mixing work not socially but in a work environment and being in an, an NHS environment I've I've found that people I've had to pretend to be somebody else and hide as much as I can um, the real impact it's had on me because it's been judged and been criticised or um, or I've been blamed or, or just not accepted. Can you understand now, understanding your ego a few bit, no matter what job position a person has, every human being has an ego. Yeah. And every human being that has an ego, you know, it chats to them incessantly, talks to them, and they believe it's who they are. So because they believe it's who they are and it's deemed as, you know, that's our evil, mm. is our ego to live in these bones, as I said before, evil is the evil inside of us. Because we're the ones that do this. In this, the story of the world is a made up one that we've made up that's very unpleasant. We made lab labels up. All the labels that we make up are, are what we make up. And where the actions and reactions of, of our experiences. And so, you know, within that, if you all those labels were removed from you, even your name, who's left? I guess the real me, I don't know. Yeah, so lots of people who say nobody can feel like that all the time or nobody can feel good all the time and they're exactly right. They don't capture their own wisdom. Nobody. We are no body. We are no thing. We're just an energy of experiences. And so all, quite often when you drop the bags, you drop other people's stuff that's been recorded. Mm. When you drop the bags, you feel lighter. But you still weigh the same when you get on the scale. So what is it that feels lighter? What is it that we're carrying? Well, we're just carrying the bad energy that we've mm. taken in. And so when you let that energy go, you feel you feel lighter. Mm. So, you know, you can't really, you can x-ray the matter of a human being, but you can't really see it. Um, there's no x-ray really that you can look and, and when you look through the skin you can see through the skin it's mm. just energy because atoms are 
is a, an Egypt. Mm. So then in that, when you think about that, you think if you drop your navel, you drop your labels and you've got you've left with nothing. Mm. What does the nothing feel like? I don't know because I'm too involved and too influenced by the outside world even like people I don't know or um, you know if, if, if somebody looks at me funny I think I've done something wrong or or that I've done some I'm not a nice person I've done something wrong or if I get a text which I read in a certain way and I and it can change my whole mood and d demeanor and everything like that um it was like when I used to work and stuff it was like I could be sort of okay and then one email or a phone call or something could really tip me over the edge and want me to harm myself and not exist anymore just by what somebody even what somebody had said or how how they'd been with me or I'm very I always want to do the right thing I'm very influenced about people um, knowing that I've done the right thing and Nothing. complying and stuff to the rules that you're doing the right thing still yeah so it's like there's these mean. rules about doing the right thing and I've got to do the right thing all the time and um who actually does the right thing and in the you know you don't do the right thing for you you want to be good but yet you treat yourself quite badly because of the story you're aware that it's not you you're aware that you're involved in it you think it's your identity and you're involved in it so you're aware of that so and then you say of experiences that you've had growing up in the world that haven't been pleasant experiences so who actually is doing the right thing it's like i want to i think i want to like please people why if i don't know if and i think not doing the right thing and you're not doing the right thing then what is it that you're doing? It sounds like quite a paradox. Isn't yeah, because I'm thinking, I want to do the right thing and I want to be a good person, but if that means hurting myself to do it, I think that that's okay. But, it's but I would it. never hurt another person. So that's that's the flaw in your story then, is yeah. that your, your ego keeps telling you to do the wrong thing. It keeps telling you to be a good person, but the ego isn't good itself. No, because it wants to like it's unstable isn't it it's never stable is the ego it lies to you tells you stories tells you nasty stories about yourself it's not doing it on purpose yeah it's just a recording from the world because the majority of people have an ego that's telling them all these things and so if you let go of that and you let go of the labels of who you are and you let go of the label of your name then you're left with nothing no thing, no ego. So what stops you from choosing that? Because the majority of people will tell the story. Everything's based on a story that we tell ourselves. What's the problem? I've got this story. And what are you doing with it? I keep telling myself it over and over again. Where did you get the story from? From my childhood. If you, I'm not saying it's the question. I'm not saying that nobody's had a bad childhood, but I'm asking a question. If your childhood's that bad, and why do you keep one why do you want to stay there mm. why don't you leave it as far away as possible it doesn't exist anymore why do you want to keep regurgitating your childhood if it's an awful story good question and part of me thinks because i don't know anything else and that's even more scary what if why? what if the could be more scary than what you've been through normality and and okay. I, don't, I don't I don't know it, it frightens me when when I look back and think of the things that like I've come through the city centre today 
and it's full of young people going to a festival and when I was that age some of that age I was just studying some of that age I was in a psychiatric hospital um, and it's like I just thought to myself oh I'm glad I missed out on all this because it seemed so scary that they were so they didn't have routines they were just carrying the bags they were just off camping they didn't the, the it's so re- scary to have a really good time. Yeah, and to but mix what? with people and yeah. talk to people, and it's like they so were all just talking to people. Actually, from what you just said, I prefer to be scared, and I prefer to be in a psychiatric hospital. I know it. Is, and I feel you, comfortable. It's more scared to me. That was scary. It would be going to a festival with loads of people who might talk to me, might come near me, might touch me, might want to have a conversation with me, and not knowing what you're doing from minute to minute, and that freaks me out. I feel more comfortable knowing that I've got my routine, even though I hate my routines, and I hate the eating disorder, I feel more comfortable knowing at this time I'm gonna be at this doing this. At this time, if I put my clothes in a certain way, if I pull my curtains in a certain way, if I touch my alarm clock in a certain way, even though I hate it, it feels less scary than actually going for a weekend away with a group of young people. It's actually living in fear. How can you say that living in fear is less scary than having a good time without fear? Because that what they're doing seems so scary and so alien and so, my favourite word, far-fetched not in my not in my world not in my it's not in your world is it no no because you like to live in the scary world but what you're saying is i've gotten to know this world yeah so because it's i've normalized this scary world that i live in Mm. you know that you that's what ultimately is what you're saying you've got to live in a world that's kind of free Mm. which the world isn't free anyway because you know, everything that we do growing up is a program mm. that we should do this and we should do that and we should do that and don't go up there and don't do that and don't do that and you should do that and you should do that. So we don't have freedom. We think that we have freedom, that, but we don't. It's, isn't it fantastic when you can have, you know, three weeks holiday from work? Ah, oh, wow, that's amazing. Three weeks of freedom. But how many weeks will you get not thinking about work? Isn't it amazing when you can choose your lunch hour from one or can I have it at one or can I have it at 12 got a bit of a choice there isn't that amazing mm. no it's not really but it's those grabs of little bits of freedom it's really amazing oh it's amazing because you know somebody lets me come to therapy and you know they, they give me the time off to to do me to do my illness that mm. is amazing I, is it really shouldn't it shouldn't it be normalized as that how things should be but it's not, it's amazing, then we need that security, we need somebody to tell us what to do because we've been so programmed with that, we need, we need, a, you know, our security would be to work for somebody else because, and giving us that bit of, mm. that bit of rope every now mm. and then. And it's a bit like when you're a child crossing the road, you can't cross on your own. Mm. You need somebody with the reins on. And to, so for you to take the reins off, is quite scary. Yeah, and because like one of, one of the things that um, when I watch TV, I'm quite happy to, I can watch a programme about death row, murders, anything like that, real life um, crime and things like that. It doesn't bother me, but I find it really difficult and unsettling watching, I wouldn't, watch any program which was a reflection of like normal life because it's so alien to me and so scary and what's scary about it that i don't know if it's i want to say it's scary because it does feel scary but i don't know if it's highlighting what i find difficult to do because it's just like people having a normal conversation, people having relationships, people living with other people, people having disagreements and and working through them. Like one of my worst nightmares is having an argument. I've never had one. I'd 
I'd die if I were in an argument or something. It's, it's just... Isn't that a lie, what he really does? Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I won't. But, do you know what I mean? I fear... Um, Did you believe it? Yeah, and I still do. I just think Even it's... Even though you know it's a lie, you're saying that. It tells you as fresh as a daisy, a lie. Yeah. And you're saying it. So if I said to you, if we argued right now, you'd drop dead. No. Would you believe... Do you believe that? Yeah. Do you believe that if we no, argued right I don't. now, you'd drop dead? No. Right, okay. Then why do you believe that? Because it's it's horrible, it's uncomfortable, it's... it's it is, but... but it's telling you that you dropped dead, literally. You captured it. Now, let's just hold it for a second. Realistically, you know this is a lie, but you're going to go along with it. Your free will chooses to go along with this lie. Why? Because I don't... I don't like... uncomfortableness. I don't like... I think everybody's got to agree, or, well... I've got to agree with everybody and you know I've agreed with stuff that I don't agree with but I've agreed with it because I think that's what the other person wants and they'll like me and I'm doing the right thing if I do it. Do you like them? Not usually no but I think I think I do. <laughs> you know I just like have to please people and stuff and I know. What if they don't want to be pleased? Yeah, well, when I were in hospital, they found that a little bit really difficult. When I was in for, for the refeeding programme with anorexia nervosa, um, I went in eat, eating very, very little. I was only eating a, hundred, a couple of hundred calories a day and wouldn't eat certain foods and this, that and other. And, but as soon as I went in hospital, um, the regime was very, very strict you will eat this amount in a, a day, you will eat these types of food, you will have two courses, um, it will be from a very restrictive menu, like two or three choices, um, you will eat it all, you'll eat it in a certain amount of time, if you don't eat in a certain amount of time, you get it taken off you and you get written down that you don't comply and you'll get your phone call taken off you. It was all very much like that and I went into that. Was it, so as we said before, punishment and reward? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If, if you didn't comply, with your 40 minutes bed rest, all the, the, the rules that they gave you, drinking a pint of full fat milk every day, whether you liked it or not, if you didn't comply, you'd like, oh, that what worst thing, you'd get it written well, down. You want to, you know, the, as, as the found now is that some foods cause allergies or, mm. you know, dairy products can cause certain things for certain people. And were they, were it a food that would feed uh, nurture your body or was it just it wasn't just it was just it was just, just what it. they what they told you right. um and it wasn't about learning to look after your body and be healthy um it was just getting the calories in you in an, and sort of them dictating the way that the calories got in you like i don't like milk but i didn't have an option if you don't have your pint of milk every day you're down as not compliant and you might get your TV, you could go in TV lounge for 20 minutes a day. You might get that taken off you. You might get your phone call home taken off you because they want mobiles in those days and stuff. Um, so it was very much a what reward and punishment rather than learning to have a positive relationship with food and your body. But I went in there only eating lettuce and cucumber and things like that during the day, a couple of hundred calories, like I've said to going in and I complied from the day that I went in and they found that really difficult to deal with because most of the other people who had been on the programme with anorexia nervosa or the were bulimia, that's the only dealt with those two issues, um, they were refusing to eat, um, they were screaming crying they were very emotional and oppositional because of the fear that they had of, e of eating um i just did as i was told did it and even the consultant after a, a good few weeks in there just came to me and just went i just wish you'd fucking rebel because they didn't understand why i wasn't behaving like a normal anorexic or whatever term you want to use and it was like but I'm doing as you're telling me, I'm doing as I'm told. And it was like, so I even got criticised for doing the right thing. Um, 
Well, it's always it the right thing for because so if you do the right thing for this for society that says you need to do this this and this to for you to put weight on number one and I, I remember you saying that you said that everything would be okay if you just put weight on yeah that's what I was told which, yeah which actually wasn't true cause yeah it was like okay. but how would it be okay under a regime like that where it's punishment and reward doesn't work really does it Mm. In, in terms of, you know, we're not dogs. Yeah. And so it doesn't work. Yeah. And the the other thing is getting to to the human being. Let's have a look at you as a, as a human being and to treat you as one. Mm. And so it didn't work. No, it, the, the philosophy was um, because they felt it was all about control, that you go in and you relinquish complete control um, of yourself control, and they take it that's it then how does you know it's like you don't fight fire with fire because you just make a bigger fire mm. so how does controlling somebody you know relinquish them from control because you're just teaching them more control mm. and so you, you you're very rigid and controlled in yeah. your behaviour yeah and um, I guess from there the stuff that I did learn about food was that um Food isn't something to be enjoyed. Um, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter about the quality or not. It's um, and for me, because I'd come in um, with fearing food and fearing weight, eating was like being punished. So that's one thing that I've continued. Now I binge eat. It's like a punishment. That's the worst thing that I could do for it somebody. Is, for somebody who. 24-7 is worrying about calories and their weight and their body issues and food, what can I eat, can I not eat, how many calories, I'll have this or that. The worst thing I can do is eat. So that's what I do. I will binge um, and eat. It's just like a switch that goes off. I will eat, I can eat up to 40,000 calories in half an hour. I will just devour anything that's there. And can you say where you devour it from? Um... If I bake, that's a big mistake. If I bake, because not very much ends finally. I can, um, I've learned over the time that I tend to kid myself sometimes. If I do a food shop, I'll go, oh, I can get that and I'll get it for next week and I'll get it for this, that, and think I'm all right, I won't binge because I don't feel like binging. But then if the switch goes, everything will go. Um, even the food that's? Even the food that's in the bin. Yeah. Even the food that's frozen, I've eaten frozen stuff. I've, I've been on the floor at two o'clock in the morning, stomach cramps from eating so much, sweating from trying my body trying to process everything and 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 the amount of sugar, dehydrated because I'm sweating that much and my sugar levels going, feeling sick, and being lying on the floor thinking, what else have I got in the freezer? What else have I got in the back of the cupboard? Um, it's just that need to eat loads of food and, dis and and technically to destroy myself because that is the worst thing that I can do from somebody who's got an anorexic mind. Um, the worst thing that they can do to hurt themselves is eat. Um, Why do you want to hurt yourself? Like, as in not being hurt enough? I do think that, but sometimes I just can't stop. It's like a switch and I'll go, and then I'll come round and I'll go, Oh, look at what I've just done and it's like I have to get rid of everything I can't even leave things in the bin in the kitchen I have to get I think right that's it that I'm not going to do it again that's awful I feel really awful I can't sleep during the night or I'm ill the next day because of it and it's like get it out of the bin get it in the back bin outside and it's over and done with I'm not going to do it anymore and then the switch will go again can you see the story playing out in your mind as you're saying it right now can you feel it in your body? Yeah, I can feel quite... Yeah. I've noticed um, that I get quite speaking really quickly. Because you, you, your body's releasing energy, so yeah. the more that you get worked up, the more you release energy. Yeah. And so that's what you're doing. You're exhausting yourself by yeah. doing this. And the other thing is is that, you know, if you, I just want you to go inside and have a look to see. Can you hear the ego voice telling you the story? Yeah, and it's making you feel a certain way. Yeah, and I can, can I can see, see the I can see the images. Yeah. Um, 
And so the images uh, will take you into it. And so it's that, it's recognising that if you let all that go, then you just drop it, just drop it on the floor now. Just drop all of it and go back to having no name again. So go back to being a being and leave all that story. And it's all a made up story that you're making up, but you're making yourself do it because you believe in it. You believe in this story that it isn't a you. You've got a relationship with it. And I do think. And you just stop. Because it wants to chat. It again. does, yeah. yeah? Okay. It, wa it, it, it wants to go. It's like, okay. I want it. So look at it then, no, right now. Have a look at it. You've just had a look because you've described the feelings in the body. And look at the thoughts that want to come. Just look at them. Can you do that? Are you looking at them? Mm. Okay. Describe them to me. What's happening? I feel like really tense and I feel like that I've got an energy that I want to get rid of. Okay, so can you blow it out instead and just keep blowing it out? Because you can tell yourself another story if you want. You have free will to do that. And the so images can... that are, are, are coming back are previous binges and things okay. like that. And Because it's, re it's the recording, so what it does is you, you open the file link cabinet up, you take out the file that you want to have a look at and you keep going back into that story a bit. Do you need to go back into the story a bit? Do we not know it? No, I know it and I hate it, so why okay. why do I do it again? All right, don't do it again then. Don't entertain it and just breathe it out and just go back into being a being. So you don't need the story, just drop it, drop it, drop it. Let it, let it just fall away, fall away. You, you can pick it up later if you want, but let it just fall away. Should we end on that? All right. Okay. How are you feeling? Okay. All right. So are you in control of it right now? Right now. Right I'm now. in control. Okay.